Well, Canadians are revolting. Thousands of protesters taking to the streets to say down with the massive new carbon tax that are crushing Canadians. On April 1st, Justin Trudeau hiked the carbon tax by a new 23%. It now accounts for about 20 cents for every liter of fuel purchased when you go to the gas station. And it's also applied at a rate of about $15 per ton to all home heating as well. So it's not just for filling up your car. It's for the home heating as well. Canadians are rightfully pissed about it. So is Trudeau trying to silence these protesters through police intimidation? Let's ask Canadian journalist David Creighton, who just wrote a new piece, which you can see here at humanevents.com, on the carbon tax and Trudeau's clampdowns on these freedoms. Uh, David, good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Nice to be back, Clayton. These are very, very desperate times for Canadians because this carbon tax went up just about a week ago to another 23% escalating. And that's not the end of it. People sometimes think, oh, is Trudeau finished? Is he done yet? No, it's going to continue to go up. And right now it's, as you said, about 20 cents a liter of gas. People in Vancouver, for instance, are spending over $2 a liter for gas. And that is the equivalent of over $10 a gallon, a US gallon, and about $10 the old imperial gallon. So that's a, a lot of money for gas. And it's cutting into home heating, of course, and it will affect summer air conditioning, of course, uh, if, if people can afford such a luxury in Canada anymore. I was out at the carbon tax protest here in Ottawa. The police were relatively mild, certainly compared to how they behaved when Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act in 2022. The police, and at that time we had about five different police forces in Ottawa, and they converged and they came down heavy on the trucker Freedom Convoy protest. They were relatively nice at the protest I was at, I think perhaps because we had so many media there. But they weren't very nice across Canada. And as some of the video demonstrates, here are cops coming out in full riot gear, looking actually like they're, they're going to war. They're, they're in, in some, some cases, flak jackets, combat fatigues, trying to intimidate people who are simply peacefully protesting a tax that is cutting in to their livelihoods, that is making it difficult just to drive a car to work. And I think this illustrates how desperate Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is to silence all opposition. And by the way, seven out of 10 provinces now are saying, stop the tax, ax the tax, spike the hike. Now, those, those are the, the talking points. Now, Trudeau is not listening. And over 70% of Canadians are now opposed to the carbon tax. And Trudeau keeps saying, oh, you're getting a rebate in the mail. You're getting a rebate in the mail. And eight out of 10 Canadians are getting more back than they are putting out. It's a lie. And the Parliamentary Budget Office has stated that emphatically. This is an ob objective, nonpartisan part of Parliament saying, no, the carbon tax is costing Canadians a lot more than they're getting back in this so-called rebate. And Trudeau ignores the facts. All of his cabinet ignores the facts. They keep talking from a script that says this is good for the environment and the rebate's good for Canadians. And of course, it's not doing anything at all for the environment because it's not cutting greenhouse gas emissions in Canada. We are actually going increasing our level of greenhouse gas emissions since the carbon tax came into effect. And as I always like to say, even if Canadians stopped living, if they moved into caves, if they stopped driving cars, it would not affect the global greenhouse gas emissions, the global carbon footprint at all, because Canada produces about 1% of those emissions. So it's really a farce. Well, the whole thing is a farce, of course, and there's zero evidence that humans have anything to do with rising temperatures. In fact, the earth is now cooling. We have that data, of course. So this whole thing is a farce. This whole thing is a scam. And so the, the Trudeau government, what is, their, what is their position on this? The idea is we're going to raise taxes. We're going to, we're going to target and uh, raise taxes on carbon 
in order to move you towards electric vehicles, towards an electric infrastructure? Is that the reasoning here that we'll just we'll make it so burdensome for you to use a gas guzzling vehicle that you'll want to use one of these electric vehicles? You'll want to shift to that new green initiative. That's the plan. That's the plan. Yes. And the Trudeau's environment and climate change minister, who used to be a Greenpeace renegade, was actually arrested for trying to scale the CN Tower in a stunt, a Greenpeace stunt. He's actually done electric car commercials for the government, telling everybody, buy your electric car. Sales of electric cars, much as they have in the U.S. and elsewhere, have plummeted because people aren't in any way confident that they're going to be able to get a replacement battery or they're not confident they can keep these things on the road without stopping their washing machines or their dryers or their dishwashers because they can't do both. So the the idea that this is somehow going to save people money to buy an electric vehicle is, of course, totally, totally false. And I think most Canadians know that now. But Trudeau continues to invest in this concept that we have a green future, that somehow windmills and solar panels and electric cars that nobody wants to buy are gonna replace the fossil fuel equipped energy that we have today. And of course, I don't think very many people are buying into this concept anymore because we've seen how ineffective electric vehicles can be in the sub-zero climate here in the winter. And we've seen that this is just not a viable alternative. And it's got everything to do with population control, not with any sort of environmental uh, remediation. It's got everything to do with forcing people not to drive. And as I have said, our greenhouse gas emissions, whether you believe it or not, that these have anything to do with climate change, they've actually gone up since the carbon tax because people still have to go to work. People still have to heat their homes. And the alternatives are simply not there. Justin Trudeau knows that. His cabinet knows that. But he wants to force this on Canadians because it's a means of controlling the way we live and our behavior. And doing that through intimidation, whether it's through the police or through government, um, and the threat of, you know, the threat of retribution. So these protests, relatively peaceful, but... How are, can, are Canadians done with the protests now? They've come out, they've protested, they said, we don't want this carbon tax, are they going home and they're just going to go about their business? Or do you think these are going about to get much larger? I think they're going to continue uh, and they could get much larger. Initially, most people thought this would be a one day event on April 1st. And once again, April Fool's Day, we, we got the increase in the carbon tax, but they have continued and the intimidation has continued. And the opposition from the premiers in this country, from the, from the premiers of provinces, has increased. As people have said, we cannot sustain this much longer. And the, and the number of Canadians opposing it seems to be increasing. So this has become a political problem for Justin Trudeau. And he said, I don't care if I'm popular anymore. He, he is, he's come out and said, I'm, I have to do this because it's the right thing for the environment. It's the right thing for Canada. But of course, that's ominous because if Justin Trudeau doesn't care if he's popular anymore, will he use the so-called climate crisis, which I think is a completely non-event, will he use this as a justification to cling to power, to postpone indefinitely perhaps the next election? Will he use this as he used the COVID-19 pandemic as an excuse to take away civil liberties, as an excuse to clamp down on freedom of speech? I have no doubt he will, because that's what Justin Trudeau is made of. And he is increasingly in a position of the walls closing in. Today, he's appearing before the Foreign Interference Commission, which is looking into how China interfered in at least two elections, 2019-2021, but after which or through which the Liberal Party benefited because we know the Chinese targeted MPs, targeted ridings in the greater Toronto area that went Liberal. So it's highly conceivable. Justin Trudeau has remained Prime Minister because of Chinese interference. 
He's facing that commission today. He has not done well in the past when he's testifying before official inquiries. The walls are closing in on Justin Trudeau. He, he is a desperate politician, but he's the sort of desperate politician who does very dangerous things when he feels he's endangered. Well, and I think you're right, uh, definitely about the plan for this, which is to get people from from traveling, get people from using their cars, keep people home, intimidating them through this bullying. And that's exactly what you're seeing with this green, these green initiatives and so forth. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what Justin Trudeau does with these emergency powers, which we know that he likes uh, very much as well up there in Canada. David Creighton, always great to see you. Thank you so much for this. We'll be watching this very closely and what Canadians have to say about this carbon tax. If you're Canadian, let us know in the comments below, like where do you stand on this? David, great to see you. Thank you so much, Clayton. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.